Welcome once again to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. On the 6th of November, the people of Anambra State will be going to the polling booth uh, to decide who becomes the next governor of Anambra State right after Governor Willie Obiano. Uh, one of the most, you know, um, interesting perspectives of all of this is not, you know, just, you know, about getting free and fair elections, um, voter inducement or some of the things that we've been used to talking about, but mostly now, security and how the people of Anambra will be able to fully exercise their rights to vote um, in a, pay, a peaceful and secure um, environment. We're speaking this morning with the former director of the DSS, Mr. Mike Ejiofo, who's joining us. Good morning. Thanks for joining us, Mr. Ejiofo. Good morning, and thanks for having me. Great to have you on the program. Um, um, one question that I have, you know, asked every time that we come up with Anambra, before the you know, conversation on the elections proper. Um, one question I've always asked is, you know, the ability for us, as, for Nigeria and the security agencies, to identify the persons that have been behind the chaos, security-wise, in, in the Southeast. Um, do you think that we've done well enough in identifying these persons, first of all? Well, I think we have to, the security agencies have to up their game because uh, this issue of uh, coming up with uh, unknown government uh, is, uh, is puzzling and uh, quite disturbing because um, the issue is that uh, the problem identified is half solved. Well, Mr. Jafar, it seems we're uh, losing uh, feed from you. I'm not sure what the challenge is, but uh, I hope that we can quickly connect. And you know, like you were saying, if we don't, identify exactly what the problem is, then it might be difficult solving it. You know, and I, I think that's where um, it's an important place to start from, knowing exactly who's responsible for the chaos, security-wise, in Anambra State, and on the whole of the Southeast, including Imo, Anabia, and Enugu, um, and of course, Ebonyi State. If you don't know exactly who is, uh, you know, committing these crimes, these atrocities, then you may not be able to understand whether it is going to be um, a challenge you know, with the elections or not. Um, if you have also followed closely with the conversations concerning the elections in Anambra State, there's still, of course, the IPOB clamoring for, um, you know, everyone to boycott the elections. Um, for everyone who is social media active, you must have also seen yesterday that if I Uba uh, visited um, um, the um, shopping market here, um, what's it called now, in, in, in Lagos? Which of the, the shopping mall? Uh, the, the one the that shop. has a lot of Igbo traders. Oh, okay. Alaba, yes. Alaba uh, so it was at the Alaba International Market yesterday. And um, the, the, the re reception he got was, I'm sure, very far from what he expected. Mr. Ijofa, welcome back, if you can hear us. Thank you. All right, welcome back. Kindly go ahead. Yeah, so I, I, I will say, I think it's important that we identify all this unknown government because there are claims and counter claims. I hope on one side that they are not involved in it, and the government on the other side is classify them as unknown government. So I think uh, we must identify the people behind this uh, criminality before we uh, take a look for a solution. And uh, like you said, uh, there are so many groups uh, operating within the southeast. You have the IPOP, you have the unknown government, you have uh, various court groups operating from the, you have the political groups also operating. So it's 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 a it's a chaos that's uh, forthcoming, and uh, if care is not taken, the the, the the state or the region might even run into an anarchy. So what I think that we should do at this time is uh, look at uh, in terms of uh, Anambra election, uh, where people have uh, argued that uh, IPOP said they should not go the election, uh, and IPOP also has been mobilizing people not to. Uh, get involved, like uh, the seat at home order, yes. which uh, I thought said they have suspended the seat at home order on, unless the day the leader kind of is appearing on a, uh, appearing in court. But you can see that out of fear because of the unknown government, uh, people are people don't go out. And that's exactly what's going to happen during uh, the, the election. People will be afraid to come out. So I think the government need to reassure the people mobilizing. I'm happy too that the Inspector General of Police was in Anambra yesterday and uh, giving assurance, deploying all the security uh, mobile force for them to maintain law and order. 
It's a worrying situation, I must tell you. Very worrying. Okay, but with all of this is going on, uh, with all of the tension now that's going on in Anambra State, especially in the southeast, do you think that there's going to be an election? I mean, we just have a few more days before the 6th of November. Do you think there's going to be an election? Because, I mean, a lot of persons are really concerned. Already some people are saying uh, there's a tendency that we might not have that election. And whatever happens now might just be, you know, would definitely just be a replica, might just be a replica of what will happen in 2023. So do you think there's going to be an election in Anambra State? Well, as far as I'm concerned, there must, and I repeat, there must be an election. Otherwise, there will be a constitutional lockdown. Uh, I believe that uh, no matter the outcome of the election, the election should be allowed to vote. Whether it's two people or three people that vote, at least that's the mandate of the people. To go beyond talking about the elite, uh, the political leaders, should be able to mobilize their people by going to maybe area churches, uh, where civil society organizations should be involved also, asking the people to come up. Why security should be adequately deployed? And before then, I think we still have some time to identify the government, uh, the unknown government. Because if there's an arrest, at least it will lead to some uh, kind of uh, elites uh, who will get leads to identify the people, and the, the problem will be a little stop. But if you say there won't be an election, I think uh, we've had elections in 2014, 2015, election was postponed, but it was eventually held. Uh, we saw uh, what happened in, um, in Borono State, Zamfara. There are many states that elections have been uh, had more serious cases, and the elections were held. So I don't see any justification for postponing an election in Anambra State. Absolutely. All right, Mr. Ejafor, uh, one thing you mentioned was the IGP, of course, reassuring the people of their safety and some of all of that. But um, I will quickly mention that it's not the first time we've heard of these you know, statements reassuring persons of uh, security um, by even the governors of their states. But it still hasn't worked um, you know, on Mondays because you, know, you can tell that people still sit at home on Mondays, even when governors reassure them that they're safe. Um, and what does it feel like having an election in a seemingly militarized environment um, with the current military operation in the southeast and then the influx of these policemen and security agencies everywhere? Um, doesn't that feel very odd for an electoral process? Well, it's, uh, it, like I said, it's totally very difficult. Uh, but uh, we must all have to deal with that. Like I said, the political leaders, the politicians, the community leaders, traditional rulers should come up and uh, mobilize the people. And I, I believe also that this is a political problem. The federal government on its part should uh, engage the political leaders. Let us know who are the people behind their grievances and possibly dialogue. And, uh, but I think if, if we continue like this, 2023 also is going to be very, very difficult. Uh, but uh, I think we, we should, as a matter of urgency, the government should be able to engage these agitators to meaningful dialogue and see how the problem can be resolved. Our struggle cannot help. I remember in 2017 when I was prescribed, that I did one, that uh, if uh, I is eventually prescribed, which the government did, uh, the leaders will go on the ground and it will become very difficult for people to to know who is who. Now, we have gotten to that stage where people are now talking of unknown government because, you know, in Nigeria, we always have all this clinical coming up with different languages to have a kinetic, non kinetic approaches, to have a, a unknown government. And some even try to use to say unknown government. And so, so, so there's, there's a, a major problem and I think... Uh, we should be able to as a big, because it all borders on governance. And that brings me to the issue of um, this last uh, amendment or the Electoral Act on their transmission. Uh, I think if, if you put the bad politicians out of market and good people will come out to actually get involved in electing office. Because if you transmit through electronic means, the possibility of people going in to hijack uh, ballot boxes will, will, will not be there. And uh, 
it will give credence to our electoral process to have a integrity, integrity in our electoral process. And besides, when you when a candidate emerges, you will know that the candidate emerged through a credible process and the votes of the people counted. So if you don't perform, why in office? During the next election, of course, you will you, not be voted in. I'm not also mindful of the fact that uh, uh, the politicians uh, will be out to working and uh, working to see how this uh, process will be manipulated. You recall that when they were car carrying ballot boxes and I like introduced uh, this issue of electronic uh, uh, voting, they then went and started uh, buying uh, votes. So they were also. <coughs> Excuse me. They will also look for ways to see how they can manipulate this process. But uh, I think I next should be up again too. Okay, so apart from, you know, uh, a safety, talking about having a peaceful election in Anambra State, let's also look at uh, the possibility of political apathy, which happens to be, you know, something that reigns supreme in our system. Now, uh, with all that is going on, I mean, the insecurity uh, issues that are really going on in that region, and also the fact that uh, some persons also are still of the uh, belief and opinion that, yes, they should be given, uh, you know, their own federation or, you know, they should be given their own uh, republic. Do you see uh, people uh, coming out to participate in the elections? You know, apathy on the part of the electorate earlier was as a result of votes not counting. That people would just go and vote uh, uh, results, write figures, and uh, at the end of the day, you you, you emerge and uh, you are asked to go to court to challenge you. And you know, the process, uh, the legal process is uh, tedious and uh, cumbersome. Besides, to, I think uh, the judiciary is also being manipulated. But what is happening now, especially in Anambra, is that people are afraid, apart from uh, the, the apathy before, because the uh, votes were not counting, with the assurance from INEC now that the uh, votes will count through the transmission of the local vote, the challenge we now have in Anambra is fear of people to come out. And uh, it's the responsibility of the government, the federal government, the state government, and uh, whatever level to give the assurance to the people to come out and, uh, and vote by providing that security for the electorate. Well, you know, and that's one thing that I, you know, I'd asked before, you know, you know, if any, if, you know, a person who really wants to vote would feel encouraged to vote, seeing the amount of security personnel that would be scattered around Anambra State uh, for just the electoral process. There's going to be the army, the NSCDC, the police, you know, and on and, and, and all sorts. Um, and, um, you know, that doesn't make any person comfortable uh, to go exercise their civic rights to vote. Um, but, Mr. Ijofo, you are from the Southeast, so I, I want you to share your thoughts on those who have continued to preach the idea of boycotting elections. Ifan Yubai yesterday at the Alaba International Market took his campaign uh, to the Igbos in, the, in that market, and he was met with a very, very uh, bad response, you know, with you know, a large crowd uh, booing him, you know, and saying that Nambikanu is their leader and there will be no elections in Anambra State and whatnot. So, Mr. Ijofo, you're from the Southeast. I want you to share your views on the idea of boycotting an election and how they have not been able to see that that affects them negatively. Um, and, you know, they don't get to win. Well, it's a point of correction. I'm not from the Southeast. I'm from South South. Oh, okay. Uh, my my no, apologies. I'm, I'm both. Uh, I'm concerned about what is going on in the southeast. Uh, everywhere in Nigeria wants Nigeria to remain one indivisible Nigeria. But uh, and that reminds me of uh, the jingle of one of the TV stations when uh, Ozekome always say that we cannot say Nigeria, but Nigeria is already divided. You see, what is responsible for this? No, if, and in fact, even the agitators who want to remain in Nigeria, but the fact is that. The perceived injustices, inequity, unfairness on the part of uh, distribution of offices, I think that's what is causing it. And I think once these are addressed, 
uh, anybody who, like, like I, I give you an example, you know, in counter subversion, for instance, what government would normally do is to reduce areas of discontent. You recall in 1979, in 1999, following the death of Abiola in 1993, uh, the annulment of the June 20 and the subsequent uh, death of uh, MP Abiola, who was the acclaimed winner of the election. In the interest of peace, equity, and justice, all the parties decided to field the uh, candidates from the Southwest to appease them. Now, the North has, has, uh, has had its uh, uh, turn. The Southwest has had It's only equitable that the Southeast will be given uh, a chance. Uh, I, I shot at the presidency. And I, I believe that once that is done, this agitation will not be completely rooted out. But we will we, we go down because uh, there, there will be some kind of... The agitation is mainly out of grievous, accumulated grievances. Take, for instance, uh, the issue of um, the instance uh, the ex, uh, you talked about, uh, about yesterday's uh, visit by uh, uh, Uba, the yeah. final Uba, to allow the market to go and campaign. You know, the people are aggrieved, and the youth, you know, the youth are the future leaders of, they form the bulk of the population. So when they believe in something, they, they go about it. But I would rather advise that uh, the youth, if given the chance, to also channel their energy towards uh, mobilizing their people to vote out bad governors. I think that's what we want to have good governors. All these things will, will come to an end. All right. And um, of course, it's just a few weeks um, ahead. Um, you know, what, what, what more would you expect from? Uh, the traditional um, leadership, there's still Arnez and Digbo, um, and of course the political leadership in the southeast. Um, what more, or what extra roles do you think they can still play in the time between now and the elections uh, to ensure that people actually well, come out to vote and um, you know elect is, the elections there, 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 are there, peaceful? There, there is time. There is time. I believe that the federal government interested in peace in the area should convey immediately a meeting of the governors, the traditional rulers, the religious leaders, even if it's in Abuja, to appeal to them, to talk to their youth, and the youth to also, the people who are agitating that they are non government or wherever they are, they are also watching the television, they are listening to news. So once that is it, they will see a genuine effort on part of government to, to us solve this problem. And uh, they, 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 they don't come from the moon. Even though we say they are unknown government, they cannot operate in isolation of the people on ground. That's a well-known fact. That you cannot operate in an environment that you are not very familiar with. I'm not saying nobody has been able to identify who is responsible or who is uh, involved in all this. But the fact remains that whether they are unknown government, they are dictators, whatever, they are people who are they cannot operate, even in their visitors, they cannot operate alone on their own. They are working in collaboration with the locals. So that's the plain truth. And uh, once this is done, and uh, this meeting is coming, religious leaders, political leaders, traditional leaders, to get them all together on board to discuss how do we go about this election? Because it's critical. This election of in Anambra will determine what will happen in 2023. It's very key, very, very important. Apart from uh, the process, the, the amendment of the laws, and it is a test case. It, 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 it's going to be a test for what is going to happen in 2023. On the security perspective, you know, you're a former director of the DSS, so I'm, so I'm sure you understand how these things should play out. Um, let's also talk about your views on intelligence gathering and being able to, you know, immediately call some of all these, you know, little groups of, of, of militancy here and there. Because some people have also said that the, you know, um, actors in some of these attacks on police facilities, you know, um, um, INEC buildings, um, attacks on vigilante and the likes that have led to loss of lives and, and, and all that, may not necessarily even be IPOB members. It could be really the, you know, pockets of armed groups here and there in the southeast. 
Um, and so, you know, share your thoughts on the, the importance of intelligence gathering that the DSS should have been able to pull out uh, to ensure that these things are taken care of. Yeah, you see, that intelligence is a, is a trade and uh, is a professional thing. I, as I speak, I don't know what the, um, the quantum of uh, intelligence the SSF has on this. And uh, if you recall that uh, two, three days ago, uh, the convoy of the campaign rally of uh, the governor of uh, uh, Anambra was attacked. Uh, the campaign rally and uh, some vehicles were abandoned, arms recovered, some people escaped gun uh, truck. And I believe that it's very, very important that the people involved in this must be. And I also believe that uh, the intelligence agency, the space security service, the trail of all this. And uh, I believe that some arrests have been made too, uh, even before this uh, issue. Some of them are identified and. Uh, and being profiled. You know, it's not something that you just uh, rush with. Like I said, intelligence gathering is to change. It takes time. So I'm looking at it after the people to give members of the public what is going on. All right, so with all of this that's going on, because uh, we're really out of time, but I'd like to share your thoughts on this. Uh, for the purpose of safety, uh, don't you think it's high time Nigeria adopts uh, the e-voting, electronic, pure electronic voting, because what we're doing is just introducing technology, you know, to different parts of our elections. Is it not time that we adopt, you know, the electronic voting where people can actually, you know, vote from the comforts of their homes? I, I completely agree with you. You see, uh, we, we, are, we, are, we are gradually, but steadily making progress. With this electronic transmission, I think the next thing should be electronic voting. That you can stay at the comfort of your home and vote. And you have less job, less work for uh, the security agencies. If we have this electronic voting, would our non government out? All right. And uh, I think we, of course, once again had those uh, network challenges. Uh, we've been speaking with the former director of the DSS, Mike Ejofo. And, of course, very interesting conversation concerning what happens on the 6th of November in Anambra State, where the governorship election takes place. Um, are the people of Anambra State eager to come out and vote? Do they feel safe enough to vote? Will the complete militarization of the Southeast also be a hindrance to these people who want to exercise uh, their civic duties? And these are, of course, some of the questions that must be answered. And like he said, it's important that the federal government, the state governments, and traditional leadership all create some sort of dialogue to ensure that you know, conversations are had towards bringing peace to Anambra State and the rest of the Southeast. But that's where we will be wrapping it up this morning. Thanks to Mike Ejo for, for joining us. Um, of course, apologies for the network challenges. If you missed out on any of these conversations and you would like to catch up, remember where to find us. It's simply at Plus TV Africa on Facebook and Instagram. Same with our YouTube handle at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. I am Osao Gie Ogbonwa. Wishing you a beautiful day. And I am Messi Bopo. Do have a great day.